Welcome to the Cosmic Mystic Podcast, the space for healers, coaches, and conscious leaders on a mission to elevate collective consciousness. I'm your host, Danny C. Muniz, a former Catholic disciple turned eclectic witch, guiding you through the realms of astrology, spirituality, and the quest to escape the matrix. It's time to unleash the mystic within. Let the transformation begin. Hey, 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 my friend. Welcome back to Keeping It Real with Sidereal Astrology and the Cosmic Mystic Podcast. Welcome to this week's Sidereal Astrology Forecast for November 11th through the 17th. Danny Simonis, intuitive astrologer and spiritual counselor. We have some vibrant energies in our sky with our 1111 portal, our full moon in Aries, Saturn goes direct, and Libra season is ending, which means Scorpio season is coming at us, my friend all in this week. Yes. So we've got lots to talk about. So let's go ahead and dive in. If you are new here, hello, my friend. Welcome. We're glad you found us. If you are watching this on YouTube, yes, this is a YouTube channel as well as a podcast. So you can listen to me. You can take me on your walk, on your errands while you're doing things around the house. Uh, while you're working, as I hear a lot of people tell me that they listen to me while I'm working several times <laughs> throughout their day. Um, I don't know if I could listen to myself all day. Maybe I already do. <laughs> and we also have this, as I said, on the here on the YouTube channel. So if you're on the podcast and you want to see the visuals, you can come on over to the uh, YouTube channel. You'll find all the link, all the all the links, all the links down in either the description box or the show notes. All right, here we go. Going to share my screen and let's begin. All right, we have got some really great stuff starting. So as you know, I always like to start with the state of the union or the state of the planets, as we like to call it around here. So let's see where everybody's hanging out. We've got, and this is November 11th, 8 a.m. And this is showing in Austin, Texas, because that is where I am, my friend. So we've got our sun at 25 degrees Libra. We've got Mercury here in Scorpio, 17 degrees. We've got Venus in her early entrance here in Sagittarius. We've got Pluto still in Capricorn. Yes, Pluto is still in Capricorn. You see it here. It is only at five degrees. We have not changed signs. Pluto is not making a move here in sidereal astrology. I know I've seen some tropical friends of ours saying that, so I'm going to point that out. We've also got Saturn here, which Saturn, he's right on that line. Oops, I didn't mean to do that one. Uh, he's right here on that line, still in his retrograde, which we he's been in retrograde since like June, my friend. So he's coming out of retrograde, as I said, and I'll tell you more about that. He's here in Aquarius. Our moon is currently in Aquarius. We've got Neptune here in Pisces at three degrees, still in retrograde. We've got our North Node here in Pisces. Chiron retrograde in Pisces at 25 degrees. If we come out here a little bit further, we've got Uranus over here, retrograde in Taurus, and Jupiter over here, retrograde in Taurus. And then finally, we've got Mars making its move through Cancer, which we've been talking about because that's where a lot of that motivation and drive has kind of been a little like, <laughs> we haven't really been that motivated or that driven to do things. And it's more on the emotional front. So if there's a lot of emotions coming forward or you're like the tears just don't want to stop, if you're a Cancer like me, <laughs> or maybe there's just this frustration or um, maybe it's a little bit more more of passion that might be coming out for you. This is a there's a lot plus there's a lot in our world right now. Let's just say right there's a lot going on, and so there could be a mix of things uh, happening as well. But that motivation is really more of an inward internal. Um, 
idea around the emotional energy. So there's a lot of drive around our emotional energy, which I'm going to say, my friend, be very, very cautious about the emotional decisions that you're making right now because of Mars being in cancer and because a lot of emotional energy around us, number one, unplug. I need to stop my screen share for a second because I need to see you. We <laughs> unplug from the collective energy, please, my friend, unplug. I found myself last week plugged in and then I was extremely exhausted and I was like, why am I exhausted? I haven't really done much today. And it was because I was plugged into the collective energy unplug, my friend, unplug. It is okay to unplug your own mental health, your energetic health, your wellness matters more than anything, which is what this full moon in Aries is going to be teaching us and going to be bringing forward. So we'll talk more about that in a second, but I just want to let you know it is okay to unplug. Please unplug from the collective energy as much as you need to and be aware of the decisions that you're making? Are they coming from an emotional place that is on a high or a low? This is one of the things, especially for those of you that follow human design and are, um, what is it, emotional authority, right? You want to be very careful uh, to ride the full wave out and not make the decision on the high or the low because they're, especially with Mars and Cancer, we could be making some decisions that are a little bit um, like, you know, kind of rash, I want to say. That's the word that's coming to me. I'm also going to say like, you know, Aries, ener um, Mars energy, which rules over Aries, is very like quick and it doesn't really think things through. It acts. And so because our emotions could be high, there's this acting and wanting to do things out of just being on that emotional high. So I'm going to encourage you, my friend, to ground your energy, to slow down, to take a deep breath and really ride the wave of the emotions, a ride, like ride that cycle. And even if you aren't an emotional authority, like ride the cycle through so that you're really making a very grounded decision. Okay. Back into it because again, as I said, we've got lots to share. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what's going on with our sun this week because we do have some uh, interesting, <laughs> I love to call it interesting um, aspects. So on 11.11, we have the sun making this opposition here to Uranus. So let's talk really quick about that. So Uranus is that energy, that very vibrant energy of rapid or unexpected change, um, things like circumstances changing. You might even feel as if your freedoms may be challenged. Again, my friend, I'm going to remind you that you are a sovereign being, okay? You are a sovereign being. Uh, stability, security may feel a little bit like a little uncertain. So there could be some uncertainty. There could be tension that may have been building that is ready to like be released. Um, the really beautiful thing here is Uranus. And one of the things I'm going to invite you to step into with Uranus here is Uranus can have that detached perspective or viewpoint. It doesn't get caught up in the emotional energy of things. And so we're able to really allow that detached perspective. I like to think of it as the omnipresent energy or the idea of like a third, like fly on the wall. So like if there's something that's going on with me or there's, there's a situation, I love to go fly on the wall or omnipresent idea and just kind of take a detached viewpoint from the situation. So I'm not really coming from logic and I'm not coming from emotion. I'm really stepping out and just looking at it from a bigger perspective. It just helps me heighten my awareness, especially around uh, things that can be a little bit challenging. All right. The next one that we're going to see come in here on the 13th is this trine 
over here to Neptune. So as we've talked about many times with Neptune, Neptune is more of that spiritual, um, more like spiritual energy, more like looking at spiritual pursuits, your spiritual practices, um, engaging in more of the spiritual things in your life. And there's really heightened sensitivity when we're talking about this, especially with this trine. It's very conscious energy. Neptune tends to be a little bit more cloudy, tends to be a little bit more in the subconscious. And so these things are really coming into consciousness here and working really beautifully together. So if there's any subconscious work that you're wanting to do, this is a great time uh, to do it. It's also a really good time to deepen some of those relationships um, that you have, especially as we're here still in Libra. Um, and just meeting other people or other people that can have like a significant role in your life. All right. The next one, before we talk about <coughs> the big one, which is the sun moving into uh, Scorpio, is going to be the sextile over here to Pluto. So Pluto being that really powerful energy, as you can see, the sun here has moved into Scorpio and it's making this sextile here with Pluto. Now, Pluto does rule over the energy of Scorpio. Pluto, it may be small, but it is mighty. So it's a really powerful energy. It's all around control, power, that strength that we need. It's also around the transformation. So with Scorpio and Pluto, we see that death and rebirth idea. Now, one of the things that can be challenging here with this is there is an increase, which is which can be really positive, an increase in a need to succeed. Now, if we look at the overall season, and if we look at this, like this time of year, and we look at that Mars and Cancer, there could be like, emotions, thoughts that are wanting to come forward that are like, mm, I'm not good enough. I haven't met my goals. I haven't, I haven't succeeded. Right. And so there's this, this maybe wanting to step into hustle, wanting to step into like overdoing it and getting into that stress and overwhelm. I'm going to invite you, my friend, that I do not, I do not believe in, in hustle. I do not believe in hustle whatsoever. I actually believe in slowing down and taking a step back and getting into the flow and taking action from that place where we are bringing in the feminine and the masculine together. I wrote this in, in my weekly reflect, reflection email that I send out every Sunday. And I talked about that energy of hustle and it more being for me of inviting both of those energies in, but not coming from a rush to like, I got to do it. I got to make it kind of energy, which is very masculine, but bringing in that feminine here. And so there could be this obsession or this, uh, this compulsiveness, this drive that is like, I got to do this. I got to step up. I got to do this. Right. And I get that. Like, trust me, there are days where I listen to those really masculine, um, either podcast or masculine, uh, motivational energies, right? Like the Rocky type energy. That's like, go, you got to get it. You got to dig deep. Like those don't, don't get me wrong. There's a time and a place for them. And I love them when I need them. And I also love the more getting into alignment with myself, getting my thoughts together, clearing out my stuff so that I can take the action. I totally believe that we have everything we absolutely need inside of us. And if we slow down and if we take a moment to just tune into that, my friend, you can unlock your infinite power. So with this sun in, in Pluto, I'm just going to remind you to just be very careful of wanting to like push yourself outside, which again, can be used if you are in the place of I am grounded, I am balanced, I am in alignment, and I'm moving from that place instead of like, oh my God, I got to hurry up and do this because I'm so behind. Totally different energies. Okay. Let's talk about our sun in Scorpio. So our sun moves into Scorpio here on the 16th. So on Saturday and will be in Scorpio all the way through December 15th. So let's talk a little bit about 
what the Scorpio energy is. And I kind of already touched on it a little bit, but we're going to touch on it a little bit more. And that is, first off, the, the Scorpio is ruled by, as I said, Pluto. Scorpio is our middle child, if you want to say, in the zodiac of the water signs. So we have our cancer zodiac as being the baby of the water signs, Scorpio being the middle child, and then we have Pisces being the elder, the adult, so to speak. And the if we think about that, water being, uh, Scorpio being that middle child, so to speak, in water, there is some knowledge, right? And there also is a little bit of like, ah, oh, I'm like, I'm in this middle, like I understand these things and I actually want to dive deeper into them because I don't have all the knowledge that I seek yet. So I, I really need to get some more knowledge and some more understanding. So Scorpio is all about diving deep past what is on the surface, going deep down multiple layers to what is hidden. It wants to get beyond the surface level. So if you know Scorpios, you know that they do not like the the chit chat conversation. Like, tell me your deepest, darkest secrets. <laughs> right? Tell me, and they're not going to tell you theirs. They want to hear yours, but they're not going to tell you theirs. I'll, I'll tell you that. But what they, they want to do is go beyond what is being told to them. So whether that's in you know, like a TV show, whether that's in a social media post, whether that's in a movie they might see, they're wanting to go beyond that. Like, okay, this was cool, but what about this? And they want those deeper questions or they want to look behind the veil and it's like, well, show me how that's done. And so some of the things here with Scorpio energy is an uprooting of the things that are deep down, the things that we don't like to talk about, the things that in my family we hid under the like, you know, um, rug or it's like we hide that under the, we don't talk about that, right? We don't go there. We just, we sit up here. We don't go deep down. And for somebody who likes to go deep down, that was very difficult growing up because I, I was always like, but why, but why, but why do we do this? And why does that, and why do you choose to say that? And why do you choose to do this? To this? I was very curious, even as a teenager, just very curious about why things were, they were, where, were the way they were. Uh, it's one of the reasons why my degree is in psychology, because I, I wanted to understand people more. I wanted to know what was behind why they did something or why they chose something. And then it's led that to me, uh, led me here. God, my words are just not working today. <laughs> uh, that's what led me here. So you may find yourself getting stuck, getting fixated, wanting to do the deeper research like, and have that, one of the really beautiful things is Scorpio is a fixed modality. So it means that like it can really dive in and get really focused, which is great, right? When we need to focus in. However, if you've got, you know, a million things on your to-do list and you go down this rabbit hole, right? And just go all the way down it, then you might not, you might be missing, right? Some of the important things. Now, if this rabbit hole is taking you because you're getting some insights of what is the most, most productive or most best thing for you to do, then by all means, totally love that. Just be mindful that you might get stuck on things. Like if there's an a conversation with a client or a conversation with a partner or family because we are going into the holiday season, let's just say, and there is a lot of conversations and a lot of things happening with family. And if you're anything like me, that is a difficult topic, right? So there, I just want you to be careful, <laughs> just like wanting to like put this out there just to be very careful about this because there could be things that are coming up and you might want to bring some, like, you know, let's just say this, people love to bring things up and then you get so fixated on that thing that you can't look past it, right? You know, this has happened to me before where somebody said one thing and I'm like, 
over here on my own little journey. And I can't stop thinking about that one thing that that person said, even though they said a whole bunch of other things, but they're just on this journey. But I'm on this journey on by myself because I'm fixated on what they are talking about. Or you can't shake something. You can't let something go. Like something happened with a client or a customer and you can't let it go. Like you can't shake it. That it, That is something that can happen. So I'm going to invite you to look at how can you put things in place that when you get to that point, because you don't know you're in it, right? You're in it and you don't know you're in it, but there are things that you can do to make sure that you are stopping yourself. Or when you do, when it does come into your awareness, like, oh crap, I'm, I'm fixated on this thing that you can pull yourself out and move yourself into a new direction. Keep that in mind. It's one of the reasons why active listening is so important because you're listening not to respond, right? But you're listening to understand. And so if you are finding yourself like, ah, my uncle or my dad or my mom does this one thing and I know they're going to do it. How about we don't set that intention, right? How about we open up our perspective and say, hmm, how do I want to encounter these situations? I'm going to be talking more about this in a podcast episode about how to prepare for these um, family gatherings, let's just say, that might be a little bit more challenging for some of us. So all to say, Scorpio is a beautiful time for transformation. It's a beautiful time to allow, and I'm going to say this here, do not be afraid of what comes forward. Do not be afraid of what's come forward. Um, I want you to hear me say this so that when it comes forward and you're going to be in your head, Danny said, do not be afraid of what comes forward because everything that comes forward during this time, and I'm not trying to scare you here, please understand that. I want to empower you. What comes up is meant to come up for you. It is the right time. It is, you are in the right place. You have all the skills you need to work through this. Okay. I, I want to put that out there, my friend, because I think a lot of people tend to get scared around Scorpio season. It's like, oh, I'm going to have to deal with all this stuff and I don't have time to deal with it or I don't want to deal with it. My friend, you have everything you need to deal with it. It is the perfect timing. It is coming up for you. Everything is always working in your favor. Remember that. All right, let's move on to our moon, where our moon's going to be this week. So let's go back over here to the beginning of the week. And as I mentioned, we start this week here in Aquarius. Uh, Aquarius is the air sign. And so there is a lot of wanting to go from this to that to this like quick energy, really good time to finish up those quick tasks, uh, to move things, um, to, to kind of move like the little things forward, to brainstorm, to research, great time to do that here in Aquarius. And then you'll see the moon on Tuesday moves into Pisces and will be in Pisces uh, for uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. Now, Pisces is a water sign and it is going to come up here on Wednesday to Chiron. So there could be things that are coming up, some past um, past wounds that are wanting to come up, um, maybe even some things that are what kind of wanting to come to an end, especially with this 1111 and Libra energy. There's a lot of ending energy here and really wanting to step into new especially with the full moon in Aries. So we have a lot of this like building kind of energy here. So I would say those two days there, Tuesday and Wednesday are great for creative work, for uh, getting into emotional work as well. So as a, as a entrepreneur, as a business owner, this is a great time to focus on the uh, emotional content, connecting with that emotional content. It's also a great time to do some deeper work uh, to really pull out some of the limiting beliefs that you might have. Also a really beautiful time because of Pisces to connect to um, your spiritual practices, really stepping into honoring those practices throughout the day, whatever it is that helps you connect to your spiritual self. And then coming in here on Thursday, we're going to see the moon move into Aries. So we have that Thursday, Friday, and then 
coming on Saturday, it will move into Taurus. Um, and let me finish out the week and we'll come back and talk about that new at that full moon. Uh, so we have Taurus Saturday and Sunday. Taurus is the earth element. And so it is much more grounding energy. So there's a, kind of like this buildup coming up to the full moon and then it's going to simmer down. It's going to quiet a bit on Saturday and Sunday. So this weekend, you might just want to stay home and chill. You might want to have all the comforts because there could be a lot of emotional energy coming through as we kick off Scorpio season with the full moon in Aries. And there's just a lot of energy coming in that Saturday and Sunday, you might just want to chill. All right, let's go back and look at the full moon here on Friday the 15th. So the full moon is taking place uh, here in central time at 327 PM. And this is making a few different aspects. We've got a sextile over here to Pluto. We've got a trine over here to Neptune. And then we have this uh, conjunction and opposition uh, with Uranus. So the moon is in conjunct with Uranus and it is making an opposition, as we mentioned earlier, to the sun. This for me, one of the things that I always look at, so let's talk about the, the, the full moon energy of Libra and Aries. To me, this is always the perfect time to look at your people pleasing tendencies. I say that because Aries is all about Aries. It is all about self, right? It's the first zodiac. It rules over the first house in astrology, which is all about me. It's all about the self. And you notice that Aries acts very much impulsively and just does without thinking. Where the flip side of Libra being an air sign and being the sign that rules over relationships, it's more about the we. It's how we're partnering together, how we're working together to get the end goal or to build something, right? We look at this from a romantic relationship. I'm, we're building a life together or a business partnership, whether that's an actual partner in your business or partnering with other businesses, right? Joint ventures, collaborations, partnerships, this partner energy where we're partnering with other businesses, other people. We have the same kind of end goal. We work together to do this one thing. So we have this idea of Aries being the, the one that is all about me, all about, I'm going to do this on my own. I can do this and taking care of self versus we can do this together. Now you might think like, well, we want to do this together. Wouldn't, wouldn't we want to do this together? Yes. And we also want to make sure we're taking care of self because if we're not taking care of self, we cannot do this together. If I am in, I want you to think about this. If I am in a business partnership, okay, if I am in a business partnership with somebody where we are uh, collaborating or partnering on a project, on an event, um, on a goal of some sort, and if we're partnering I want that person to bring their best self to this partnership, correct? Right? Isn't that what you'd like as well? So wouldn't they also want the best part of you to be present as well? Absolutely. We want two people coming together as their best versions. Now, the best version of me is not when I've exhausted all my energy giving to other people. It's not when I'm so tired, so burnt out, so stressed out that I can't think straight, that I can't make decisions, that I'm on decision fatigue, that I'm unmotivated. Is that my best version coming into this partnership? I would say no. I would not want that person that I'm in partnership to show up that way. I want them to show up at their best. And so what that means is they have to take care of themselves in whatever way works for them. I'm not here to tell you how to be your best self. I'm here to allow you to awaken to your best self by digging deeper into what is currently happening with you. 
somebody told me uh, this past week, like, Danny, you help people meet themselves, meet themselves on a soul level is what I added. And I was like, absolutely. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm here to help you understand yourself on a deeper level so that you can move forward in all the things that you desire. Now, here we go. Let's look at this Aries energy. Aries teaches us how to be, and this is my, I've loved this. I'm going to write a book titled by this. Maybe there'll be another podcast someday, or maybe the current one will change. I have no idea, but the title is Consciously Selfish. I believe in being consciously selfish. It took me a long time to wrap my head around that because I was a people pleaser, because I thought my worth was in how I gave to other people. And don't get me wrong. I love to give to other people. I love to support other people. However, I have to make sure that I'm taking care of myself first. Again, you've heard this a million times. I'm just here to remind you. So this full moon, I'm going to invite you to look at those relationships. Look at how are you taking care of yourself and how are you showing up in your partnerships? This also goes to your romantic relationships, my friend. How are you showing up in your romantic relationships? Are you just giving your person the exhausted version of you. And don't get me wrong. I understand our partners, like my partner has to hold me sometimes. I have to hold him sometimes. Yes, this happens. And so, yes, that's going to happen. But are you constantly like bringing your tired, like exhausted, um, overwhelmed, stressed out version of yourself? Or are you saying, you know what? I need some time. I need to go take a bath. I need to go sit outside. I need to go on this hike so that I can feel better so that when we get to spend time together, I am my best self. Like this past weekend was one of the things I did. It's like, I just needed a break and I took it and I felt so much better coming into Monday. I had so much more energy, was so ready to take on whatever this week was going to be. And this is a full week for me. I work all the way till Sunday this week, Monday through Sunday. So I don't have a day off and I have a full schedule. So I, I knew that going in that if I wanted to be the best for my clients, the best for my partner, I had to take care of me. Okay. I think I have said enough on the full moon in Aries. I will say this though, there, because of some of the tra the transits that are happening with this, so these aspects, there is unexpected shifts. This is encouraging us to take more bold self-expression. There is deep emotional connections that are wanting to come through. So I would invite you to come join us uh, for a full moon ritual. We are doing our full moon somatic breathwork experience on the 14th, uh, that's 6.30 p.m. Central Time, and it's online, so it doesn't matter where you are uh, in the world. You can come join us. It's uh, about two hours long. We will not be breathing for the whole two hours. Let me just tell you that right now. We'll be in the actual breath work for about an hour, but I like to leave a buffer because we come in, we get settled, we open up our sacred circle, we do this through ritual, and then we also close it at the very end with shares. So I always want to allow enough space so that people have their time to come back after our journey. You can find more about that in our description and show notes. Okay, let's move on because we've got a couple more things to talk about. And that is first off Mercury. So let's come over to Mercury. Mercury is in the shadow period, my friend. It is in the shadow period. So I want to, um, remind you <laughs> to pay attention to the things that are coming up right now because they are coming up for a reason. Next, um, I want to talk about uh, a couple of things that we have going on here. So let's talk about a couple of new uh, transits that are coming here on the 13th, which is this opposition to Jupiter um, and this trine over here to Chiron. So we've already seen the square with Mercury. We've talked about that in our past forecast and even in our November forecast. But let's talk about, oh, I just realized I'm not sharing my screen because I wanted to talk to you. <laughs> Let me go back and share my screen. All right, here we go. We've got this opposition right here, right? That I was talking about with Jupiter. 
So the opposition with Jupiter, Jupiter is our energy of, uh, you know, go big, go big idea, go big ideas, um, big plans, because we're talking about Mercury and the thinking. There's a lot of optimism here um, because Jupiter is one of the most optimistic planets there is. It's very like it, it just has this big energy around it. And so there's maybe um, a lot of ideas that are coming at you, a lot of thoughts that are coming at you, wanting to make big plans and wanting to be like, have this really big energy. I want you to also think about this as we talked about earlier with that, that Mars energy, like thinking about all of that, that's coming through with that Pluto. So, and that I desire to like succeed energy. The one thing I'm going to say, be careful of is skipping details. So if you already are not detail oriented like myself, this could also be a little bit more challenging for you because you might be skipping the details on things. Um, you also may find um, that you want to go too far. Now, I say this because in Libra, we don't really see this affect us too much. But when the sun moves over um, into Scorpio, we might see this a little bit more. Plus, Mercury is in Scorpio. So we may see this come through with um, pushing things, pushing people deeper, maybe than they might feel comfortable going, which we know it's probably for their greatest and highest good. But they might Phil, you might want to push a little bit more than you normally would. And so I just want to caution you for that. The next one is that Mercury trine Chiron that we see right here. Now, with Chiron, we're always talking about those wounds, those traumas from the past. But Mercury here, it really is asking us to allow for our message to be heard, allow for those wounds and those traumas to be part of our story, and really not wearing them with like a badge of honor, but having a really... Um, powerful presence with them. One of the reasons why like we don't work on past wounds and traumas to get rid of them. That's not how that works. Um, like we don't, you know, try to suppress the shadow work and get rid of the shadow. We want to embrace and have a new relationship with it. And so that is what we're doing here with this Mercury and Chiron is we're really allowing our messages to show up powerfully for us and for others. Now, the last planet I want to talk about before we talk about that retrograde from Saturn is Venus. Now, Venus is in Sagittarius. She moved into Sagittarius on the 6th of November. I talked about that in the November forecast. So if you haven't seen that, highly recommend uh, watching that because that goes through the entire month and everything that is happening. I do want to talk about um, one thing because we did have that Venus and a Neptune square that ended on the 13th. Uh, we can see that uh, still there. And then we do have one coming in on the 17th, which is right here on Sunday at the end of the week that I want to bring into your attention because this is Venus and Saturn. So Venus sextile Saturn comes in right here on the 17th. And we're going to see this just for about nine days through the 26th. But there is an increase here for companionship, really wanting to feel valued and loved, um, in our relationships. <clears throat> we are really looking at our relationships from more of a practical, more of a common sense type approach to things. Um, I would also say with the money, it's like, oh, wow. It's like saving money. It's like, let's pay off the debt. Let's make a plan for this. I would also say business is really good under this one right here because Saturn is that long-term foundational energy. And so them really kind of working together to really build that foundation. All right, let's talk about our last topic, which is that uh, Saturn is going direct. So you'll see right here, we have Saturn 
in retrograde on the 14th. And then on the 15th, Saturn goes direct. So I want to remind you, Saturn has been in retrograde since June 17th of this year. So we've had about almost five months of Saturn being in his retrograde position. Now, Saturn is in Aquarius. And so there is, has been a kind of a reassessment, right? A reevaluation, a restructuring of some of those ideas, right? The ideas where we're looking at community, rebellion, visioning, which have been all of this kind of internal ideas. And now it's ready to move forward. So I would invite you to look at over these past uh, five months, what, what have you learned, right? Because Saturn wanted us to learn some new skills, get some new knowledge, especially for those of us that are business owners that really want to focus on, on that. Friendships was another thing that was really big. Um, the idea of community who we're, who we're associating with. So have there been people that have left? Why have they left, right? Why are we no longer in alignment with them? What has shifted? Because now we're ready to move forward and we're going to be in the shadow period for a while, but as we're ready to move forward with this energy, I want you to think about now that we're here and Saturn is going to move out of Aquarius next year, just FYI, going to shift everything again. But we can see right here as it's moving through the next several months in Aquarius, what is it in the area of your community? of the vision that you have for your future, of really owning your authenticity, what does that look like for you? All right, my friend, this wraps up our Zedarial Astrology forecast for the week of November 11th through the 17th. Uh, just an FYI, as I mentioned earlier, Scorpio is coming. We have it coming here on Saturday, which means our Scorpio guidebook will be out on Saturday. So if you have not received our guidebooks in the past, make sure to go to the peaceteacher.com forward slash guidebook. Again, down in the description, you can find that, but it's uh, the peaceteacher.com forward slash guidebook and download that guidebook. Right now you'll get the Libra season. And once we switch over to Scorpio, you'll get the Scorpio guidebook. And once you sign up for one, you get all of the future guidebooks. Um, it is absolutely free. I don't charge for it currently, but I am adding some new things into it with this Scorpio guidebook. And it's going to be changing up in the new year. I'm excited to give it a fresh new feel, but I am adding some things in and this time I am adding in uh, things about the lunar cycle. And we're also going to add in things to really help you follow that lunar cycle with the new moon, with the full moon. So you'll have a calendar of all the transits that are happening, uh, all the big transits. So the lunar cycle for sure. And when the sun moves in uh, to Scorpio, Saturn coming out. So if you're like all these dates that I've been talking about, have a calendar calendar in there now for you. So you'll see that come out on the 16th for the Scorpio season. Uh, my friend, it is always my honor and pleasure to be with you today to share this information with you. Um, if you'd like to dive in more, you can learn more about me and what I have to offer over at thepeaceteacher.com forward slash uh, events. And you can learn all about the things that we're doing over here um, or just thepeaceteacher.com. All right, my friend, remember to take a deep breath. Close your eyes and find peace. Bye. Mm -hmm.